everyone, Nick here from HandyBoy.com, and uh, what I'm going to do, fixing to do right now here, is to uh, convert this uh, Trick or Treat Studios mask, Tramer mask, into a uh, typical um, Michael Myers Halloween 1 mask. And uh, the first thing we're going to do, is we're going to rip the Tramer hair off. Um, sometimes it comes off easy. Sometimes uh, you know you have to uh, <laughs> have to really pull at it. Some pieces can be pretty stubborn, like this piece. <laughs> okay, the next thing to do is to uh, prepare the uh, mask for paint. Now, having worked on several other masks from Tots, I have found the paint very hard, if not impossible, <laughs> to remove. So what I have, I have some lacquer thinner here, which I usually use to take off. It works on a lot of paints. But since this paint has really not come off, we're going to just kind of etch the surface of this paint here. It's, it's not coming off at all. And uh, this will prepare the surface of this bluish paint for um, the white paint that's going to go over. But I can see where it could just be trimmed up a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, now we've got to get some uh, flesh tone on here. So Now we're going to take a little, I've got a little naphtha on a piece of cotton here. And we're going to just wear away some of this uh, white here to give a nice abrasion look. Now ordinarily I, I would use lacquer thinner, which is uh, a little more powerful. But I want to be careful not to dissolve the flesh tone paint either. I mean, it's different when I'm working on uh, a mask that has a... Uh, flesh tone latex, but I don't want to eat through this uh, flesh tone paint. Nice abrased look instead of the airbrushed look. Okay, time to do some weathering here. So I've got some, uh, this is one of my techniques. Weathering isn't done in just one application. To do a proper weathering job, you have to build up layers. And this is the first layer I like to call the uh, residue layer. And if you, if you want a better, exp or a more detailed explanation and weathering. I've got a few DVDs out making a Captain of the Killer. We'll show you how to weather. Uh, the art of weathering. We'll show you particularly how to weather a uh, part two mask. And um, probably my most recent, with all my recent updates and everything that I've learned, is on my Chasing Halloween DVD. You'll really get an in-depth look at um, 
the weathering process and a better explanation than I'm doing right now in this quickie video. Okay, so here we are now. My, my battery just died, so I did a little bride brushing. Bride brushing, or <laughs> known in America as dry brushing, uh, to bring out the, uh, some of the detail of the mask. And now, to, to because the features are a little soft on this mask, so I've got to brush here some black paint. I'm going to do a little, some more dry brushing just to bring out the, uh, the features, the cheekbones. Turn this light off up here. Help me. Okay. I always test it because you don't want too much paint on your uh, brush, and it's best to keep this just very subtle. You can see that coming. Uh, like I said before, if you want a uh, better detailed look at what I'm doing, um, my newest DVD, Chasing Halloween, has a lot of mask making and a lot of Halloween fun. I call it uh, a maskumentary about enjoying the Halloween season. Making masks and you know enjoying the Halloween season. And this is a, a, a tip right here. This is a makeup brush. You get these in the drugstore. Go to the makeup department, the ladies' makeup department, because I don't think there is a men's makeup department. But <laughs> go to the ladies' makeup department, and you'll see them in drugstores, grocery stores. Those, they should be on a rack. And makeup brushes, they're, they're very inexpensive. This one was a dollar. And I'll tell you why I like them. Because the bristles are so soft and it gives you such, uh, it gives you, it gives you uh, a greater blending capability. Okay, we're now ready to put on the hair. Okay, so we're making our way up to the uh, front hairline. I'm using something, I usually use tacky glue, but I'm using a little something different today, which dries a little faster. And that is rubber sea mint, yes. Just like the kind you used in uh, third grade. Where you put a little on your desk, rolled it up in your fingers, <laughs> and made little rubber balls to throw at the girls to get it stuck in their hair. <laughs> really be on the real mask. Not just sculpted in, a lot of masks have that sculpted in blue line, but I'm one for, you know, accuracy and perfection and detail, I should say. And a little uh, bit of trivia here. I'm actually using a little bit of hair from my little dog, Poopsie Pie, who just got a haircut. And her hair is very fine, very similar to mohair. <laughs> so <laughs> I put it to use. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll start selling Poopsie Pie's hair to uh, 
hair masks with if there's ever a mohair shortage again because every now and then there is a shortage of uh, mohair and uh, camel because these are the I guess they're the two most popular hair fibers to use on masks and sometimes they're just in very short supply you gotta wait for months to get them so maybe maybe uh, selling Poopsie Pie's hair in a hair shortage <laughs> will be a good second business just gonna do a little weathering here Another thing you don't want too dark, and too prominent. You notice the different uh, shapes of the two glue lines. This one has the temple shape, while the other one was just uh, straight down. I'm going to attempt to brush this out now. I'm not quite sure it's dry enough, but we'll see what happens. And this is uh, brushing out all of the loose hair fibers. Now it's time to give that hair that accurate <coughs> mist of black paint. Just like the uh, movie, they, they actually in the movie they did it with a can of spray paint but uh, I'm going to take a little more precaution <laughs> and use my airbrush can. and you want to have some of that brown showing through you don't want to you don't want the hair to be completely black because then if you wanted that you could use black mohair you want some of the brown showing through to uh, show that it was just misted over with some black spray paint. Okay, let's get into a little styling now. I like to uh, nap up the hair in front. I just now this is matting the hair right to the mask and the, uh, the hairstyle that you want to go for for the uh, for the classic Myers hair look is very flat on the sides with a little bit of poof on the top so I'm just and of course these famous little okay people now here we have our finished mask um, you know I did miss a videotaping a few steps along the way only because my battery died on my camera and I couldn't wait for it to charge I had just had to uh, you know forge ahead and finish the mask but uh, anyway here is the former trick-or-treat studio Tramer mask excellent excellent sculpt I must say so uh, you know if you want to catch up on any uh, steps that I missed my chasing Halloween DVD set is uh, has my most recent um, techniques for weathering, hairstyling, and stuffing. Those three things that are really important to a lot of people. So, uh, hope you enjoyed this little conversion. And uh, let's have a hand for Trick or Treat Studio for making some good masks out there.